I wish I could be in the picture. Have any of you ever wanted to be in a picture, but you were asked to take the picture? Well, yeah? So I'm wondering, how many of you are transplants? Like you lived someplace else before you moved here? Oh, look, all around the room. <laughs> Me too. I'm from Oregon, and, but I have been here for 21 years. And, but all of my family, except for my daughters and their families, live far away. And so 90% of the time, you guys are my family. Isn't it important to be a part of a family where you can become known and loved? That's part of what we're trying to build here at LifePoint. And, and I think that we do it on lots of levels. Um, I am Pastor Tammy. I'm the care pastor here. And we've been talking about, we've, we're in a three-week series on family matters. And last week, Pastor Roy was talking about acceptance and approval. How it's super important to accept people. And as we do that, we gain the right or the privilege to be able to talk to them about their behavior without losing the relationship. And um, today I want to challenge the Christians and the religious leaders that Pastor Roy was talking about last week. So when I say religious leaders, I mean the other pastors in the room. I mean team leaders. I mean small group leaders. Those are the people that I'm trying to talk to, if you call yourself a Christian. We're responsible to lead by example. And sometimes we haven't done a very good job of that. So for those in, you, in the room that are not followers of Jesus, I want to say that I'm sorry that we haven't always done a good job of that, and we've affected your opinion of Jesus. I think that if we get this right, the stuff that I'll be talking about today, that you guys might just want to hang around more often and learn more about Jesus. So that's why I'm talking primarily to the Christians in the room today. I want us to focus on how to relate when we're not related. How do we relate to each other especially when we want to call ourselves a family. There's, there's lots of um, things that can get in the way of that, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Last week, Pastor Roy talked about the religious leaders or the people that were thought to be more spiritually mature. And they had a hard time accepting Matthew, who was a tax collector. Now, if you remember, the tax collectors in that day not totally unlike today, but even worse, the tax collectors in that day were considered thieves or con artists or, uh, you know, the people who extort people. <laughs> Extortionist, those. <laughs> so it made it difficult sometimes to actually accept them. But Jesus did that. And I love how Jesus modeled um, in that relationship um, the, the, how to accept someone who other people had a hard time accepting. He was so good at looking for the people who were curious and hungry for some kind of change in life. And he made it super simple. He invited them to a meal, right? And we often see him, there's a book called A Meal with Jesus that has a phrase something similar to, he was often at a meal, going to a meal, or coming from a meal. He loved to eat, but mostly he loved people, and he wanted to spend time with them and invest in them. He was judged for it. So were the people who he met with. They were judged too. How often do we invite people into our lives? Or maybe instead, how often do we judge the people in our lives? I don't know, we gotta ask ourselves that question. Um, 
we say things like, I can't believe they are eating with them. I can't believe that they would invite them into their house. Do you guys ever say any of that? Not maybe out loud, but internally? I love that Jesus wasn't phased by this, and he continued to have what I like to call Matthew parties. Those are those parties that he invited the most unlikely guests, the ones that we might reject, the ones that we might have a hard time hanging out with. And for some reason, lots of times in Scripture, we see him hanging out with them. And he is our model. Sometimes, um, when we're going to introduce somebody new into the family uh, or a circle of friends or your small group or that kind of thing, um, people size them up. They decide whether or not they want to be around them. We can do that too. We're like, okay, I don't know if I really like them. How are they going to change things? I'm not sure I want them to be a part of this group. They, they might like them better. Well, maybe they'll do things better than me. That, that's hard. That's uncomfortable. I'm not sure I want them to be a part. Well, sometimes there is uh, the importance of just accepting them and loving them even though we might be insecure and feeling that uncomfortability ourselves. And it made me think of this clip, this movie clip, where this lady was trying to play nice, but we get a glimpse into maybe what she's really thinking. Check it out with me. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> I don't know. You might not have that violent of thoughts towards other people, but, but we do tend to have some of those internal thoughts that are like, no, this can't be real. But we're playing nice on the outside. This can happen, those internal thoughts. But I just want us to think about this. We, genuine welcoming is not the same as tolerating. That's in your notes. I had a time um, when there was someone who wanted to join my team. And I was uncomfortable. They had years of experience in doing something similar to me. And I was nervous that they were going to come in and take over. Um, that wasn't their heart at all. But my insecurities were playing out. And they had gifts and skills that... Um, might be stronger than mine. I wasn't sure. I didn't know them well enough to decide whether or not. But I kind of held them back for a little bit, and I'm not proud of that. It really was me trying to grapple with how I was feeling and how they might take it to a new level, and was I willing to give that up so that they could do that, so that they could be their best self, and ultimately, I chose yes, but it took me a while. So I have struggled with this exact same thing. And there are times that we do, we just have that, I'll be kind and cordial, but inside all of those insecurities or dislikes or judgments are going on. How many of you have ever invited someone important in your life to join in on something that you were doing? Anybody? Okay, a few of you. <laughs> did you want the people who were at that thing that you were inviting them to, did you want them to be kind and play nice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know um, that there's been times that I have actually kind of prepped the group or the family before someone comes, and I have said things like, Okay, you guys, you need to be on your best behavior, right? <laughs> Please, be nice. Don't scare them away. Because, you know, some of you can be scary sometimes. <laughs> but I have done that 
Jesus would like us to do whatever work we need to do internally, that stuff that I'm talking about, in order to, to let the love that he has for us flow out to others. He wants us to do that hard work, and I want to challenge us to do that. We've been encouraging other people to take their next steps, not just other people, but all of us, to take our next steps. But you guys, we have to be a community that is warm and welcoming and not scary so that they can step into doing that. We um, have been creating this culture that says, hey, we love you. Come, join us. And we want to continue that. There are some of you that do this so well, and I just want to thank you for that. You're warm and welcoming. And there's many of those on the greeting team or in the kitchen or ushers or children's, uh, the kids, the people who work with the kids and the students and everything. So thank you so much for investing in that way. But honestly, you guys, as a church, sometimes we can say, I'm comfortable in my group. I'm comfortable on my team, and I'm not sure I want to include other people. So I want to talk to us today about opening th some things up that get in our way so that we can be more inviting as people get brave and take their next steps. In Acts, uh, which the name of it is from the Acts of the Apostles, in Acts chapter 2, they are, there was all kinds of things going on. There was lots of miracles. There was lots of exciting things happening. And we're going to talk about a day or a season when all of the people there were trying to live out their faith. And it took some work. There was lots of different cultures represented. There was lots of different nationalities and languages and uh, preferences and everything. And they had to learn how to get along with one another practically speaking. They even had to learn how to get along with people who they despised. There were people that they were like, there is no way I'm getting near them. They are not clean. They are smelly. Whatever. But they really didn't want to get along with them. But they were being asked to do that. And there was lots of life transformation that was happening as a result of that. Let's check out Acts 2, uh, 44 through 47 together. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in home, homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that the kind of community you want to be involved in? I know it. that's what we've been trying to do here at LifePoint. And that's what we do um, a lot. People were loving and generous they were thinking of one another's needs and sacrificially giving. They were taking care of one another's needs. They were enjoying meals together. And it said as a result, you guys, that there was a great joy that spilled out. Wouldn't that feel wonderful? Have you experienced some of those times when that has happened? What does it say happened as a result of them living this out together. What I love is it says they were adding to their numbers daily those that were being saved. Just this last weekend, we had seven people who we saw that had given their lives to Jesus and said, I want you to be Lord of my life, and they went public with it. And I don't know if you remember Pastor Kyle saying, we want more of that right? We want more of that. That's why this church exists. I've been here since the beginning of this church, and I can tell you from the very beginning that has been the heartbeat of why we exist. 
that we wanted people who were unchurched, people who had been burned by church, people who were far from God, that we would create a place where they could come and be known and loved, and they would come to know Jesus as the Lord of their life. That's why this church exists. And you guys are a part of making that happen all over this valley, whether it's in your workplaces or your homes or wherever you travel. That's what we're creating here. And it's so exciting. I've been here since, the be since I've been here from the beginning. I've had the opportunity to see so many people come and seek uh, practical help and as a result, experience some life change. And it is an exciting thing to be a part of. And I want you guys to experience that, to come alongside others as they're taking their next steps and watch how their lives change. That's what I want for each one of us. Christians, I just have to say though, there are some things that get in our way that prevent some of that from happen happening sometimes. And so let's talk about a few big ideas. The first one being that we need to open our hearts. Open our hearts. I love how the Passion Translation says this in verse 42 of that same chapter. Their hearts were mutually linked to one another, sharing communion and coming together regularly for prayer. This takes some work to get our hearts in this kind of place, doesn't it? Those were intimate things that they were doing together. They were praying together. They were taking communion together. We do that um, fairly regularly. And those were special moments that they were sharing. But that means that their hearts had to be in a right place to be able to do that with one another, right? And I am wanting to challenge us to get our hearts in that place. So I love, hate this challenge that Paul, one of Jesus' disciples, was writing to the Roman Christians and to us. In Romans 12, 9, it says it this way. Don't just pretend to love others, but really love them. Hate what is wrong and hold tight to what is good. To summarize, don't be like Viola. You know the lady up there? Don't be like her. Don't pretend. Don't put on a show. But really love from the center of who you are. We're not just playing nice. We're talking about that genuine love. And if that's not in your heart right now, you can ask God to help you with that. You can ask him to, to do whatever you need to do so that you can reach out and be that for other people. These authors are calling us to really see and seek to understand other people. And sometimes that's gonna make our per perspective shift. It's gonna be some hard work sometimes on our part. Sometimes uh, just praying with someone is that reaching out with your heart to theirs. Letting people know that you care with a card or a text or a phone call or a face-to-face, -face, a coffee or something like that. I've said that before. And some of you took, actually took me up on that. So I love that you have told me the stories about that. What would it take for you to open up your heart to someone that you don't know? I don't know what it would take for you. I know what it takes for me. And you guys, what's getting in your way? What are some things that are getting in your way of wanting to open up your heart? Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe somebody has um, wounded you in a deep way. Maybe you're just skeptical about the good nature of humanity. I hear that all the time. It's like, People are just getting worse and worse and worse. Well, we can be a change in that. We don't have to keep getting worse and worse. Maybe we just find them annoying because our personalities don't click. And we're like, ugh, they just grate on my nerves. 
and you're asking me to reach out to them and open up my heart to them? You think those early Christians that we were just reading about, don't you think that they had different personality types too? And they may have found people that was uncomfortable to be around and maybe even a little annoying? I think so. So do the hard work and search what it is that's keeping you from opening your heart. The next big idea that I want us to grapple with is to open our wallets. Now guys, I know that this is not, does not look like the wallet that you're carrying around. This is more of a girl version, okay? <laughs> but um, I am talking about the heart here. I'm not asking you to give your money to the church. I'm asking you to open your eyes to the needs around you. I'm asking you to look for people and be open to helping people with some practical needs. God has given you money that you could help someone else who has less. So I'm talking about practical things like food, clothes, maybe a bill that needs to be paid. Maybe it's that they need to know that they're valued and loved. And so it's buying that gift when they come to mind and taking it to them and saying, here. But I am challenging us, open our eyes to the needs around us, just like those Acts 2 Christians were doing, so that we can begin to really meet the needs of the people around us. I like the heartbeat behind this, this verse in 2 Corinthians 9, 7. And it says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion or because Pastor Tammy said, but decide in your hearts and then be a cheerful giver. Not like, oh, now I can't buy that Starbucks I was hoping to um, or not like, now I can't buy that toy that I wanted, or whatever. But, oh, they are in need. And God has entrusted me with this money. And I'm going to pour that out to them because they really need it. Because I care about them. And I want them to know God loves them. When Pastor Kyle and I were talking about this, he was talking about something that he tries to do um, and model with his kids, especially when he sees someone that maybe needs a meal, that either he tries to take them for a meal to a restaurant, or he goes and gets some groceries and takes them the groceries, but as often as possible, he's tried to say, hey, could we have a meal together? That meets two things. That meets their nourishment that they need, but it also feeds that connection piece that we all need. So I just love that beautiful example. Um, lots of you do it different ways. I've heard of people who have um, bags in their trunk so that when they see someone in need, that they also have it right there to hand them, and it's a practical thing to do. And some of you might not want to give, and you might think, you know what, I've given before, and they didn't use it for what they said they were going to use it for. So I'm not doing that anymore. And our hearts get a little bit hard or callous there. Or there's been some times that we've given, and it fed an addiction. And we felt like we were enabling someone. Or poor money management choices. And we were just bailing them out. And so we said, nope, they're on their own. I'm not doing that anymore. But ultimately, you guys, God knows what they're walking through. We're giving first to God and to show his love. And if you give in that way and they misuse it, that's not on you. That's on God. He knows what they can do with it. He knows how he's working in their life as a result of your generosity. And so I want to encourage us to go ahead and give. Now, if you see that there's somebody 
who is consistently misusing it, then don't keep doing that, right? Find other creative ways to do it. Sometimes it means maybe going to the, their utility place and paying the bill there so they don't have the money, but their bill gets paid. Just an idea. The last big idea is open our homes. And there is a progression to this. So we open our hearts, we have to work on some stuff ahead of time, then we open our wallets, which sometimes is a little easier because you're like, here, here's the money, but I'm not inviting you into my life. But this is that step that we're saying, I want to invite you into my life. I want to invite you into my home. Whether they're Christians or non-Christians, people who don't yet follow Jesus, they still need love, they still need connection. And that's what we're after, is loving people in that way. The truth is that sometimes we can guard and protect our homes as a private space. And I get it. We all work hard. I don't know if you're in your neighborhood, people when they get home, they just kind of go into their garage. There's not a lot of talking, not a lot of hello and all that kind of stuff. And you don't really see your neighbors often. And we connect a lot more through our, you know, electronic devices than we do in person. And you guys, there are generations who have done this so much better. And I applaud you for that. I, I love that you have done that. And if you are from an older generation, thank you for your hospitality that you have continually showed. And you can be a great example to us. And I'm hoping that you would share with us some ways that we can be more creative in our hospitality. We create spaces all around the campus to try and be um, more hospitable and inviting to people. And like I said before, there's, if you have that gift and you want to use that gift and you love to welcome people, there's plenty of ways that you can do that on the, the First Impressions team, the greeters, the kitchen, the ushers, all of that. Please, take your next step and get signed up and join that team. We would love your warm, smiling faces. Let's take a look at what happened when they were actually doing this, and they were living this out. In that Acts passage, right, it says that, those, that the numbers were be being added daily of those people who were being saved. And that's what the care is about, okay? I love in later in uh, chapter 10 of Acts where it's still talking about them being in process. And just like us, there was lots of different cultural difference, lots of different dietary differences, everything, just like we have today. And we, we, uh, they were having to figure out how to get along with one another. We have to figure that out too, right? We go, oh, you're gluten-free? Oh, I can't hang out with you too much because I don't know how to cook that way, so I can't invite you into my home. Um, oh, you're vegan? Wow, I really don't know how to cook for you, so that's a big challenge. So do we even have restaurants around here that we could even go to, um, if that's the case? So it does take some work sometimes, and we can get impatient with the differences, and it would smooth off our rough edges if we actually spent time with other people. And it can challenge us, right, to grow. When in, in that chapter in uh, Acts, Peter he has watched Jesus as an example. For years, he watched Jesus as an example. And he's going to this guy's house, Cornelius, and he, they had lots of differences, like I was talking about. And he was a Gentile, and Peter was a Jew, and he was like, we are not supposed to connect. And Jesus blew all of that out of the water and gave Peter that example, and still, he didn't want to go. 
And that was 10 years later. He was still wrestling with that. You guys, we have had the Bible example for much longer than that. And we're still wrestling with that. Right? So I just encourage us to keep working on it so that other people can truly be loved and feel welcomed. Now, just a warning. I am not asking you to put your family at risk. Because really, there are some unsafe people in the world. And so I'm not saying open up your home and just let people come in and do whatever they want and hurt your family, hurt your kids, all of that. I'm not saying that. If you have something inside you saying they are not safe, listen to that. Don't open up your home. You can stay with them. You could set boundaries. Some guy can use somebody else to reach them. But that's not the majority of people, honestly. And you guys know that there's some of you in this room that are amazing at opening your homes and loving people. You're inventive, creative in how you're hospitable. And that's what I am encouraging. You guys, what would change if we started doing all three of these things? What could change? What would life be like if we started to open our hearts, do the hard work of opening your hearts, if we started genuinely caring about the needs of the people around us, and we started opening our wallets, and not just waiting, not just saying, I'll pray for you, but let me meet that, meet that need today because I have the ability to. What could happen if we started opening our small groups and our teams and our homes? There are people waiting for connection craving connection, people waiting to be a part of small groups. Are there some of you that could open your small group and invite one person in, two people in, so that you can get to know them? Small groups are an awesome place to get to know each other well enough to have needs that are met. And I just want to challenge us to do that more and more and more. Thank you for all of you who are already doing that. There is power in unity. When we all get to know each other and we start doing this kind of life practically well, so much life change can happen. Don't you guys want to be a part of that? Yeah. Yeah. We are creating that together now. Let's work and continue to work on being this kind of community, marked by genuine love and care for one another, and see what God starts to do in us and through us. Right? Let me pray for us. God, there are so many different people in this room so many different stories and so many different uh, heart conditions. And I'm asking that whatever is keeping us from opening our, our hearts, that you would begin to speak to us. And God, for those people who have become blind or numb to the needs of those around them, that you would open our eyes, all of our eyes, to the needs around us, and you would help us to respond in a generous way. And God, for those of us who have been protecting our homes or fearful of opening them up because they're messy or they're not quite this or that, people aren't coming to see our homes. They're coming to connect with us. God, help us to open our homes, to open our small groups, to open our teams so that we Invite people in so that we can see 
more and more and more people get to know you, Jesus. Thank you for being with us, for strengthening us, for helping us do this. Amen. Amen. So you guys don't have to wait to do this. You could actually today, is there someone here today that you could invite to lunch? I know that when I left after the first service, there was actually somebody who came and said, hey, would you and your husband like to come to lunch with us? Because they were trying to put it into practice. Hope to see you guys next week as we continue Family Matters. Have a great day.